Hi, this is Keith Shabby, your friend in the mortgage business, and today we're discussing what is a multifamily property. Oftentimes, people have a lot of interest in the ideas of having a multifamily home, so they'll often ask me, Keith, what is actually a multifamily property? Many first time home buyers wonder if they should consider purchasing a multifamily property to help defray the cost of the home ownership. Rental income tempts many buyers to start out with a multifamily home that they can retain as an investment property in the future years. A multifamily property is defined as a two, three, or four unit property. Properties with five or more units are considered commercial properties and as such require commercial mortgages. A single family home with an in-law apartment usually are not considered two family properties, but may be depending on the size of the unit in relation to the entire home. Before jumping into a multifamily property, a home buyer must consider both financial and lifestyle remodifications. Many inexperienced home buyers think that being a landlord means depositing a rent check. When a buyer becomes a landlord, he or she essentially takes over as a small business. The asset of the business is the property, and the tenants are the customers. The landlord must maintain the physical asset, provide customer service to the tenants, and hopefully earn a profit at the operation. Most multifamily home buyers make two financial mistakes when they're planning to purchase. The first is to assign the maximum possible market rent as the rent that they will receive from their tenants. There is a direct correlation between the rent prices in relation to the competing apartments and the amount of turnover among tenants. In other words, the higher the rent, the more likely the tenant will be to move within a short period of time. This is due to the basic laws of supply and demand. Tenant consumers will constantly seek out the best value for the lowest price. In addition, the higher the rent, the more incentive the tenant may have to attempt to purchase their own home. Landlords should consider pricing their rental competitively to the reduced turnover, marketing expenses, and time taken to rent units. Potential landlords also fail to make adequate provisions for rent losses due to vacancies and repair expenses on the rental units. If an apartment normally rents for $1,000 per month, most buyers will simply figure their monthly payment and subtract the $1,000. No, no apartment anywhere has ever stayed 100% rented forever. Even the normal process of a tenant turnover will often cause the loss of at least one month's rent. Prudent landlords should budget at least one month of vacancy per year in a good rental market and two or three months of vacancy per year in a softer market. This means that in a good market, the property in the example above would generate $917 per month on an average instead of $1,000. Repair expenses are also vastly underestimated. If a new landlord is able to make most simple repairs, then the cost should only be limited to the materials only. A landlord who must hire out all repair work, however, will quickly find bills mounting. Holiday, weekend, midnight calls to plumbers for broken pipes can inflict major casualties on a property's cash flow. Landlords must set aside a portion of their rent revenues each month to prepare for these expenses. Tenant relations is another vital function of a property management especially when the tenant is directly above or below the landlord. Issues such as noise, parking, and garbage are hard enough for one family to manage, but the landlord must help between two to four families manage these issues without driving each other crazy. Landlords can issue rules to tenants, but there is little recourse against non-compliant tenants except for eviction. Owners of multifamilies must also understand that their property will take longer to sell and will probably not appreciate in value as fast as a single family property. Multifamilies suffer faster physical deterioration due to tenant wear and tear that is much heavier than owner occupied dwellings. Moreover, less than 5% of the general home buying public actually purchase multifamily properties as their primary residence. Multifamily homes have often had additional apartment units created without proper zoning approvals. For example, Many landlords convert the large attic of a two-family into a small studio or a one-bedroom apartment. Owners avoid obtaining approvals either because zoning will not allow the change or because they fear higher tax assessments with additional income units. No buyer should attempt to purchase a property that does not have proper zoning approvals, building code compliance, and certificate of occupancies. Lenders will not permit a buyer to obtain a mortgage that is missing any of these vital elements. More importantly, insurance companies will deny any claim for a property owner for a loss on a property that did not have all approvals in place. The last problem a new owner wants to have is to have town officials knocking on their door the day after they move telling you that you are going to be fined for zoning or building code violations. Finally, 
Multifamilies are treated differently by the IRS for federal income tax purposes than a single family home. Specifically, the home mortgage deduction is only available for the portion of the home that is used as your residence. A homeowner who lives on the first floor of a three family home may only deduct one third of the mortgage interest for the property. While many parts of being a landlord can be overwhelming, owning an income property producing property can be an excellent long term project if managed properly. This is Keith Shabbat, your friend in the mortgage business, discussing what is a multifamily property. Thanks again.